calculate the potential, i.e. voltage, inside an infinitely long cylinder, cylinder of radius R, a uniform charge density rho. In this case, you cannot assume that the potential infinity is zero. Instead, assume the potential of the surface of the cylinder, R equals R, radius equals the radius of the cylinder is zero. Also explain why you cannot take infinity as your reference point. Okay, so we want to find the voltage of the cylinder. So first start by drawing a picture because that's pretty much what we do every time, always. So this doesn't look like it's infinitely long, but it is. This is going to be radius R and now we're going to try and find the voltage. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. One way is looking at it like as individual teeny parts and being like, ah, voltage, particle one, particle two over R, and then you do a whole bunch of integration to basically turn particles into objects. And that would probably work. Another way of approaching this would be using the definition of voltage with relationship to electric field, where voltage, I should put little bars up top just so we don't get confused with volume or velocity. And we could say voltage equals negative integral E, I'm gonna say D R, sometimes two people say DX or DX or DS, both idea of distance. And we're gonna use this and we're going to do the voltage from um, calculate the potential inside an infinitely long cylinder. So we're going to do it from we're going to do it from here to there. Yes, we'll call this zero, and we're going to find the potential inside an infinitely long cylinder of radius. R. So we're basically going to find uh, voltage AB from the outside to the middle. We're going to be from, so we're going to do uh, integral from A to B. Now your normal thought process here is, wait, how does, how does this work? Um, electric field is uniform or zero within conductors, etc., etc. This is not a conductor. This is specifically an insulator because when it has a uniform charge density rho, that means that these are these electric charges for the cylinder are held in place. Held in place, they're not some free-flowing sea of electrons, i.e. insulator. So normally you have a charge on a cylinder, they're all going to move to the outside. They're not moving to the outside, insulator. So as we go cut into it, there is going to be an electric field within this um, cylinder. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the electric field. This is actually to be more precise here, which sometimes is good, sometimes is just a red herring. This is actually going to be electric field vector dot dr vector. So it's the um, it's the dot product, which is a measure of how parallel two vectors. All right. So now. We want to find electric field. Electric field equals question mark. So the way we're going to approach this, there's probably different ways of doing it. The way I'm going to do it is Gauss's law. So let's see, Gauss's law is electric field dot dA vector vector equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So this is Gauss's law, and what we're going to say is the electric field is uniformly outwards, like this. I know, drawing this 2D and trying to get some sort of 3D radial perspective, not easy, and my artistic skills are not aiding in the process. But it's going to be radially outward, which means that at any given radius, the electric field is going to be uniform. It's going to be uniformly outward. So our Gaussian um, shape that we're going to choose is going to be a cylinder as well, 
And I guess I should do it dotted. So we're like, oh, imaginary Gaussian shape, like so. And so it's going to be a cylinder, also infinitely long. And it's going to be on the inside. And it's infinitely long, so it goes to both sides. So we all, this electric field, dA, area of the um, Gaussian surface, Q enclosed is the closed charge, and epsilon naught is a universal constant. So we, we already said, hopefully I convinced you, that the um, electric field is going to be constant at a given radius. And so I can pull this electric field outside of the integral, because you can pull constants outside of integrals. Um, and also, the electric fields can be radially outward, and like, let's say we're going to use this top part of the example, the A vector, area vector, is going to be a perpendicular surface, or normal to the surface. So area vector going up, the electric field here is also going to be going up, therefore the dot product, E dot dA, is going to be 1, and we can basically just ignore the dot product and be like, oh, they're multiplied by each other. I know, feels like a lot of hand waving. For that, I am sorry. So we have electric field, dA, this is the integral over our Gaussian surface, Q enclosed, that's supposed to be E and C, or enclosed, all over epsilon naught. Um, so now we need to find the area of our Gaussian surface. So that is going to be, um, the Gaussian surface is going to start big and get smaller. So we're going to start from big, get lower, so we can get find our, uh, our area of this for any given radius. So I'm going to say that the area of this cylinder, and we're just going to be concerned with the, um, the round part of the cylinder, not the end caps. Partly because it's infinite and it doesn't have end caps, but also because the dot product of the end caps is going to be zero. So this is going to be 2 pi r, so that's a circle. And then we're going to multiply that by the length of the uh, cylinder. I'm just going to call it L, but deep down inside, we both know it is infinite. So hopefully it'll cancel out so we don't have to try and do calculations with it. So now we need to find out what Q enclosed is. So we're told that rho is constant, uh, a volumetric charge density. So that means delta Q charge over delta, I'm going to write VOL for volume here, is constant. Um, and since it's uniform, that's also going to mean that Q over volume is constant. But yeah, that's okay. Yep, 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 yep. And so for any Q enclosed, the Q enclosed is going to be the volume of our Gaussian shape here, this purple Gaussian shape that's going to vary with radius, start big and get small, or small and get big, whatever. So the volume of our sphere is going to be pi r squared. That's the area of one of the end caps of a slice. And then we're going to multiply that by the length. That gives us the volume of our cylinder. And is that true? No, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. So that's true that that's going to be Q enclosed volume. But what I really want here is delta Q. Do I want delta Q? I think I want delta Q. I think I want. Do I want delta Q? I'm not sure. Nope, we want Q enclosed, so we're good. All right, so now I'm going to rearrange this. We have our row here, our volumetric charge density. And I'm going to say that Q enclosed equals rho, volumetric charge density, times pi r squared, which is the area times length. All right, so now we can put this all together to get the electric field. So rearranging this, we get electric field equals Q enclosed, which is rho times pi times r squared times length, all over epsilon naught 
That's a terrible epsilon naught. I can do better. Epsilon naught divided by the area of our Gaussian shape, 2 pi r times l. There we go. So now, simplifying things, get a good color for contrast. Ooh, how about a blue? The links cancel, which is good because it's infinite and it would create undue difficulties. Well, due difficulties, I assume. And we get rho times radius all over 2 epsilon naught, which seems re reasonable. All right, so now at this point we have our electric field. So now that we have electric field, we're going to use that, the negative integral of such, to give us our voltage, which is, as they say, potential. All right, so now, um, bum, ba -da -bum, bum, 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 bum. I do a little whoop, thought process change, just to show my change in train of thought. All right, grab this come back down here. So now, voltage from A to B, I know before I wrote them as lowercase, now I'm writing them as uppercase, undo confusion, sorry again, minus integral electric field, rho dot r to epsilon naught A to B, again, changing my notation, which is not ideal, less than ideal. And I'm going to say that uh, A equals 0, B equals R, big R. And I might be messing up something with the signs. Um, I'm going to assume that rho is positive. I know there's no reason for me to assume that, but I'm going to assume it's positive. Therefore, the potential inside will be higher, so I'm just going to go for a positive number, which I think is what the problem is asking. So, rewriting a little bit of this, we're going to have integral uh, from 0 to r rho 2 epsilon naught, I can pull out. I know it looks like an 8, doesn't it? Like a sideways 8. I need to work on that. Bigger, bigger tail on the row. So there we go. Uh, R, dr. Yes. So now this is simple. So this becomes row r squared over 2, 2 times 2 is 4, we get 4 epsilon naught. And then we're going to evaluate this from 0 to big R. The 0 just disappears. Um, yes, rho r squared over 4 epsilon naught. Um, and some of the nuances that I kind of glossed over was that zero is basically saying, uh, nope, that's the, I think that's supposed to be the um, potential, that R equals zero is gonna be representing the potential at the center. Mm, probably have something mixed up there. Either way, um, one of these uh, is the outer radius, one of them is radius equals zero, and what they're talking about with this, you need to be careful with infinity here. So the idea of what we did here is voltage equals E negative AB is the same as voltage B minus voltage A. Um, so voltage A, we said, was zero, and this is question mark. If we say that vol um, the voltage at infinity is zero, then some of the problems you run into is trying to find the electric field of this infinite line. Um, the electric field of an electric of a line is something sort of, sort of like one over r. 
And so we do the voltage of, we would take the voltage of that, we take the integral, and we get the voltages related to natural log of R, and then we get something like natural log of negative infinity, or no, we get natural log of zero, I think, somewhere. Either way, that's the problem where we're going to get with, with infinity, is finding, we can find the electric field, the electric field for an infinite line charge is going to be related to 1 over r. We start to take the voltage of that from infinity, you're going to get indeterminate forms. And so the way we overcome that is by saying that a equals, the voltage at a equals 0, and then find the voltage at the center with relationship to the outer. So the formula, we, the answer we get down here at the bottom, rho r squared, where the, r is the radius of the cylinder, solid cylinder, or 4 epsilon naught. And that gives you the voltage at the center of an infinite cylinder of charge. So a bit confusing, and this one is really hard to get an idea of what's going on. To kind of recap where we went here, um, we were trying to find voltage. Voltage is, you can either do it through, one way to do it is through looking at in terms of point particles. Another way is looking at voltage in terms of its relationship to electric field. Voltage is the negative integral of the electric field integrated with respect to position. And therefore, if we can find the electric field, we can usually find voltage. And so for this, we wanted to find the electric field, and the way we did that was using Gauss's law. Gauss's law uses a closed surface integral, I should be a little surface in, closed surface integral there, and we related that to Q enclosed. Q enclosed is then determined by uh, the volume of our enclosed surface, because we had a constant um, volumetric charge density. So then we did some math, everything kind of sort of worked out, and we got an answer. So hope that helped. See you next time.